Hello and welcome to ADHD Support Talk Radio. My name is Tara McGillicuddy and I am the host of ADHD Support Talk Radio. I am also an adult ADD and ADHD productivity coach and the founder and director of ADDclasses.com. And at ADDclasses.com, we provide virtual support and education to people affected by ADD and ADHD. We offer free webinars. We have an extensive ADD audio library with more than 150 courses, and we also offer more in-depth support programs. And you can learn more about ADDclasses.com by going to the website, www.addclasses.com. And I'd also like to remind everybody about the new ADHD Support Talk support site, Over at Patreon, you can learn more about that by going to www.patreon.com slash ADHD support. And with that, I would like to welcome back Alan Brown to ADHD Support Talk Radio. In just a moment, we're going to be having a talk about willpower in ADHD. But before we get started talking about willpower, Alan, can you let our listeners know a bit about yourself and how they can touch with you after the show. You bet. First, great to be here as always, Tara. I always appreciate being able to speak with your awesome uh, tribe. And um, I'm someone who was undiagnosed for many years until I was 36, and that uh, resulted in a lot of, um, of course, underachievement, a lot of frustration, and even uh, uh, alcohol abuse, drug addiction. I was self-medicating for a while, and even when I got myself cleaned up, I, I really struggled to perform at work uh, in my in my job as an ad executive. And it wasn't until I started to kind of develop some what I call brain hacks. And then, of course, once I got diagnosed and treated properly, everything just dramatically changed. So I totally get uh, for all the folks out there, I get I totally get the you know the 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 total curse of ADHD, but I also totally get the potential gifts of ADHD. And that's my story. And I created some uh, virtual coaching videos. They're award-winning videos called ADD Crusher. And you can uh, check those out and also get a free ebook at addcrusher.com called Five Things You're Doing Every Day That Make Your ADHD Worse. And trust me, you're doing all five of them every day. We all are. Yeah, great stuff, Jeff. Definitely check out Alan's website at addcrusher.com. He has some great stuff. So glad you've come back to ADHD Support Talk. And we're going to be talking about willpower in ADHD. So, Alan, where would you like to begin when it comes to willpower? You know, I, you and I have talked about this topic a number of times, and I think we agree that uh, it's really misunderstood or really people don't really know much about the mechanics of willpower. And there's been a lot of research done on willpower in the last decade or so, particularly in the last five years. And we now know that willpower, it's like a muscle. It can be strengthened, but the better way to put it really is that it's like a battery, you know, or a fuel tank. And uh, when you start out in the morning, uh, just like you start out with, with, you know, good energy, you start out with kind of a full tank of willpower. And as the day goes on, as you make decisions, as you, you know, do some work, as you get frustrated with things, your willpower gas tank starts to head toward empty. Um, so this is really the, the, the mechanics of willpower. And as we can better understand how that works, and we'll talk a little bit more about some of the mechanics, the better you can kind of, of manage it. Um, and even find ways to replenish that tank because the other great thing about uh, willpower is that it is a replenishable uh, resource. Now, I know we all hear we hear the word willpower a lot. It's like one of those words that's often thrown around. But how do you actually define willpower? What what is your definition, or what is the definition of willpower? Yeah, it, it is uh, uh, talked about a lot, and few of us actually can sort of correctly identify the definition of it. And really, the definition of it. In, in the terms that we're speaking here is one's ability to do the thing that you don't necessarily want to do, uh, but you need to do. Um, and also to not do the thing that you want to do, but that you shouldn't be doing. So obviously, you know, willpower is not, you know, chowing down on that pint of ice cream when you're, when you're trying to diet. It's, uh, you know, being able to fire yourself up to do the task that you have been avoiding for a long time. And with this definition, it it sort of really plays into 
the difficulty that ADers have, particularly when it comes to willpower, and it's, and it's sort of twofold. One is that we, because we don't have the dopamine and the other neurochemistry available to our frontal frontal lobe, as I'm sure most of your your listeners know, that we have this physiological difference. We are short on supply of the brain chemicals that help us, you know, have willpower and staying power and motivational power, et cetera. So there's that. But there's also, as a result of that, we ADDers sort of get the, we come to believe that we just don't have willpower. I mean, I remember thinking this throughout my academic career and my, my early, uh, a business career that, you know what, I, I think I'm just lazy or, mm-hmm. you know, I, I just, you know, some people just have willpower and they can get up and go and do that thing. And I just can't seem to do that. And so this phenomenon of quote unquote, not having willpower affects us and sort of can turn us into a more, you know, uh, um, you know, low self-esteem, low self expectations and sort of a defeatist uh, mentality of, yeah, well, when it comes to doing those tough things, I just don't have the willpower. And that is a really scary and unfair and unnecessary place to be. Yeah, and that's so common for people to just believe they don't have the willpower. So I think, you know, that might be one of the biggest misunderstandings when it comes to willpower is the belief that people don't have it. That's right. And if you think about it, think about when you are at your best. Right. When you're fully energized, um, you are, you know, you've you've, uh, you've you've had a good meal or you've you know, you got your great cup of coffee and you're actually ready to get going on something. There are times when we are at our best. And those are times where we tend not to have such big uh, problems with our willpower. And that's just an example of how you know, willpower is this kind of fuel tank that you can fill up. And it gets emptied out over the course of the day. And I do want to speak to that emptying out over the course of the day because if our audience out there can be more aware of the things that steal our willpower, mm-hmm. you'll be able to be less likely to say, yep, I just don't have any willpower versus saying, you know what? My willpower tank is low and I need to refill it. So, for example, um, when you are hungry, you are going to have less willpower. Uh, when you are tired, you will have less willpower. We all know, and I, Tara, I know uh, you are big, big, big on the issue of sleep. You guys are talking about that a lot recently. Um, and so when you are sleep deprived, but even when you are just mentally fatigued, um, you will have less willpower. When you are angry, uh, you will have less willpower because a lot of your energy is going to you know, feeding your cortisol and your fight or flight response. And also when you are stressed, which is related to anger, when you are really stressed out, you're going to have less willpower. This is why when we are stressed, for someone who is a, maybe a, a light smoker or someone who recently quit, they'll say, you know what, I just light up a smoke once in a while when I'm really stressed. Or I just, you know, uh, I, I reach for that uh, pint of ice cream when, you know, I have had a really tough day. This is when our willpower is low and that red light is going going off when, you know, the tank is near E and your little blinker comes on. So if we can be more aware of these situations, hungry, tired, angry, stressed, and know that, you know what, it's not my weakness. It's not that I am a bad person. It's not that I don't have willpower. It's just that my tank is low and this happens to everyone. You can then take measures to alleviate that and put a little bit more fuel back into your tank. So self-care is very important when it comes to willpower. I know I always talk about self-care being essential to productivity, but you know, from what you were saying, it's really important when it comes to willpower. Yeah, think about that. How many folks out there actually equate self-care with willpower, mm-hmm. right? I mean, that's one of the great examples that you just stated of, you know, how misunderstood and and not well enough uh, understood or not well enough known about this willpower phenomenon is. Now, what other areas, when it comes to like willpower, do you find it's misunderstood? Um, oops, you're gonna need to you're gonna need to edit here too. Um, darn. Uh, Sorry, I'm, yeah, I'm okay. I, I don't know if there are any others. Uh, oh, you know, oh, you know what? This this I'm gonna answer that. Uh, you know, another area where this is misunderstood is in terms of your rhythms, your body rhythms. 
This is really important. There's a thing called ultradian rhythms. That's U L T R A D I A N. We've all heard of our circadian rhythms. That's the rhythm, the natural rhythm that you know takes us from sleep to wake to sleep to wake cycle. But there's also ultradian rhythm, and that is our natural rhythm of work and restore, work and restore. Now we tend to think that we human beings are supposed to be able to operate like a computer, like, you know, turn it on and just run multiple programs and go and go and go until we just shut it off. Well, we actually are very rhythmic. And so our bodies and brains want to work in cycles, typically 90 to 120 minutes each. And then our bodies and brains want to rest for 20 minutes or so. Now, everybody's different. But if you were to be more aware of your ultradian rhythms, um, you would be able to be more aware that it's not that you don't have willpower. It's mm-hmm. that often, you know what? I'm just, I just need a little bit of a rest. It could be a power nap. It could be just getting up and taking a walk outside. Uh, it could be just doing a very quick, quiet meditation. Um, so yeah, this is another area where willpower is misunderstood and we confuse our natural body rhythms with Nope, I just don't have the willpower and I'm, you know, and I'm no good and I'm a terrible person and I, I really am just lazy. And I'm guessing a lot of people listening have never connected a lot of these things with willpower and just, just assume I don't have the willpower and don't really think anything more about it. Yeah, and you know what, what really that gets down to is it results in a lot of shaming, self-shame, guilt, which, mm-hmm. you know, further just uh, deflates us, right, and makes us feel like we aren't, you know, we aren't good enough or we're not trying hard enough, et cetera. Um, and there are, there are actually ways to kind of fire up your willpower by doing um, what's, what's kind of called pride and shaming, which is, uh, you know, being proud of the things that you have accomplished because that does re-energize you. And also you doing some selective uh, shaming, um, which is, hey, you know what? Um, I, I really shouldn't have done so and so. Let me get fired up about the fact that I'm disappointed that I let that slip and let me now get fired up and, you know, do the right thing. I work with clients who have, uh, for instance, uh, addictions, shopping addictions or, uh, some substance addictions, uh, addictions. And, um, what we do is we talk often about trading some of those, you know, those uh, uh, boosts of dopamine and other good chemicals that you get from doing that wrong thing and looking for more of the good uh, dopamine hits that you get from doing the right thing and also getting yourself fired up with what I call, the, what I call a negative nag, which is, hey, I really don't want to be doing this. And I'm going to get a little bit angry about the fact that I was doing this or that I did this. And then that can actually fire up your willpower tank. Selective shaming, that's a term I, I haven't really heard a lot about. Um, interesting. Yeah. Well, we have to be careful with that. As you know, Tara, you know, um, there is a lot of, you know, talk in the last five years or so about shame and how it, it is um, a very, very unfair things that we do to ourselves, particularly uh, we ADDers. But that's why I call it selective uh, shame. There's a psychologist named David Destino who calls it hot self-control. Um, this is, you know, an example of that is, um, you know, you want to light up a smoke and you actually just think about your nine-year-old daughter. Um, mm-hmm. That's, you know, it's you're not beating yourself up, but you are just doing a conscious little exercise that says, hey, is this really where I want my energy to go? And it can help fire you up. So it's not shaming like totally beating yourself up for no reason, but it's using a little bit of selective shame to help fire you back up and give you some willpower. Now, what haven't we addressed today, Alan, when it comes to willpower that you'd like to talk about? You know, um, the, the, a, a key thing is that so much of the willpower thing is how you view um, your own your own ability and your own prospects, right? And there's this wonderful research by a woman named Carol Dweck. I think she's at Stanford. It's D-W-E-C-K. And she did a wonderful TED Talk on this. And she says that willpower is not unlimited. At some point, you do need to replenish it. But, she says, it's a much larger resource than previously thought. And those who believe they have abundant, replenishable willpower are able to push on. 
This is what she calls a, uh, a growth mindset versus a static mindset. And I might have gotten that last term uh, close or, or wrong. But mm-hmm. when you believe that you can have control over things and that you can, um, uh, you know, fire up yourself and do it, you are more likely to be able to do it. And, I, you know, you know me, Tara. I'm not about rah-rah stuff. I'm not about cheerleading. You know, everything I do, I, 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 I want it to be evidence-based, uh, grounded in science or at least common sense. And, you know, I don't mean to be cheerleading, but this is real research that says that when you actually talk to yourself and say, you know what, I can actually do this. It's not that I don't have willpower. I just need to better understand my physiology, my ultradian rhythms, and I need to, to also understand my past history, which has beaten into me the idea that I don't have willpower. And I can fire myself up with, you know, proper diet. As you say, Tara, self-care, making sure I've got rest. If I'm not feeling it right now, take a break, take a walk, and come back to it and push forth. And um, Dweck also calls this the power of yet, meaning, all right, I, I haven't been able to finish this project yet, which is a very, very powerful idea. If you just keep saying, well, not yet, meaning I do have the power to do it and I will, that's a beautiful thing. It's a great gift that you can give to yourself. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing that book would be a great resource for someone to learn more about the growth mindset and to help improve willpower. Working with a coach, I mean, you gave examples about how you work with your clients on this. Um, So there are resources and there are ways to better understand willpower and to increase or replenish your willpower. Yes, indeed. Indeed. And again, as Carol Dweck has got uh, a wonderful TED Talk. So if you just search TED Talk and Carol Dweck, you will find that very quickly. It's so wonderful. It's only about 17 minutes long, and it's, and it's a great, great inspiration. Okay. So what haven't we touched today when it comes to willpower? What else is? I mean, there's, it's such a big topic, and like you said, it's so misunderstood. Well, I do. I just want to reiterate some of the ways that you can kind of refill your tank, Um uh, and, and just, just touch on it briefly because it's not, I don't want to list a whole bunch of solutions and stuff. That's for another time because we really just wanted to dig into the understanding of willpower. But, you know, again, w- remember that when you're hungry, when you're angry, when you're stressed, when you're tired, this is just sucking fuel out of your willpower tank. So listen to your body. When you are, when you are hungry, um, make sure you put some protein in your stomach and you will be much more likely to be able to get fired up. It actually, protein helps with uh, the creation of the neurotransmitters that help you get motivated. Uh, if you are tired, if you're sleepy, take a power nap if you can or just get up and take a walk outside. If you're grumpy or if you're stressed, I've got one little trick I'll share, which is I call it the PP478. And that's not to conf- be confused with the poo poo 24 7 because that's what babies do and we don't want to be doing that. <laughs> It's called, it's called the PP478, and this, this PP stands for pause and plan. And so when you feel stressed, you know, we ADDers know about the power of the pause and how we tend to lack it, but you can use your feeling of stress when you hear it in your body, in your shoulders, in your neck, or I was talking with a client the other day who was saying, I feel it in my jaw, man. When I get stressed out, my jaw starts going. Um, and when you can feel that and hear that in your body, you know it's time to pause and plan. And the way you can really create that pause is by doing what's called the 478 breathing technique. And I know you know about this, Tara, but it's a simple, it's really a yoga move where you just mm-hmm. breathe in through your nose four counts, one, two, three, four, and you hold it for seven beats or seconds. What I tend to do is once you're holding your breath, you can actually kind of hear your heartbeat a little bit better. So you listen to that and you count out seven. And then you let your air out very slowly with a little back pressure through your mouth. Well, I'll do it with audio style like <laughs> you can maybe hear that. But you do that for eight counts, so it's four, seven, eight. And you do that three more times, and you will find that your body has, boom, it has reset itself, and your stress has reset itself. It's a very powerful thing. And so, you know, if you just do that one thing, you are going to stop the drainage of willpower fuel and give yourself a fresh start with that fresh pause and the ability with that pause to plan and say, okay, what was I working on? Let me get back to that. Or what do I need to get busy with? Let me get busy with that. So there's there's your kind of final little juicy bit for you. Yeah, and that's just such a simple technique, deep breathing. And it takes moments. I mean, it's not something that you have to spend a half hour or three hours doing. That's like 
moment of your life that can increase your willpower and help you be more happy and productive. Yeah, I mean, if there's one other thing about willpower uh, that's misunderstood is, you know, we, we think that this, this, this mysterious thing that, you know, requires a bunch of work uh, or, you know, again, that only certain people have this. But to your point, it really is a matter of some very simple things that we can change, alter, or do uh, that make a massive difference, like the PP478. Give it a try. Okay, well, before we get going, Alan, can you give your website information once again? You bet. So it's addcrusher.com is where we've got these award-winning instructional videos. Uh, They're recommended by over 100 coaches uh, around the world, frankly. And you can find them at addcrusher.com. And while you're there, grab the free ebook, Five Things You're Doing Every Day to Make Your ADHD Worse. And I'll just repeat it. You're doing all of them. We all are. Uh, but you don't have to. And a lot like the little simple solutions we're talking about here, there are there, there are kind of things that might not have been obvious to you, but there are things that you can really solve rather easily and, in effect, make your ADHD much less severe than it feels like it is. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Alan Brown, and thank you, everybody, for listening. And you can stop by our Patreon ADHD Support Talk community where you can listen to an after-the-show tip from Alan Brown. Thank you so much, everyone, and thanks, Alan Brown.